11 bodies, 10 years, and countless theories. I'm talking about the Long Island serial killer case. It was just how many bodies were being found in one area. I was shocked. Follow us, Billy Jensen and Alexis Linkletter, on Unraveled, Long Island Serial Killer. And to follow our investigation even further, don't miss our all-new special Unraveled, The Long Island Serial Killer, streaming now, exclusively on Discovery+. Plus. How would I describe Schlotsky's new, bigger, meatier sandwiches? If I had one word, I'd say they're majestically meaty. If I had two words to describe Schlotsky's new, bigger, meatier sandwiches, I'd say they're epically cheesy. If I had one more word to describe Schlotsky's new, bigger, meatier sandwiches, I'd say they're freaking revelatory. So, in a word, I'd say Schlotsky's new, bigger, meatier sandwiches are Majesta Meat Epa Cheese Fricatory. Schlotsky's, it's a mouthful. Hallelujah. Well, my name is Kathy Brox, and this is the LUTG Radio Show. Amen. On LUTGradio.com, WKKP Digital Broadcasting. Uh, hallelujah. Don't forget, download the app. Hallelujah. You'll find that on the LUTG Radio page, LUTGradio.com forward slash TV. Amen. And uh, download the podcast too. Glory to God. You'll find that on Spreaker, Amazon, iTunes. And wherever you have your distributors, Anchor, glory to God, whichever podcast service you list to, listen to, uh, look for LUTG Radio, Kathy Brocks, amen. Glory to God, hallelujah, in the highest, all praise and honor and glory be unto his name. Today's show, y'all, is called Trust God, Fear Not. Amen. So you know what we got to do. We going to put on our full armor of God. Glory to God. Putting on the full armor. You know where we go. Luke 24, 45. We got to get our understanding. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Because you can read scriptures all day long. But if you don't understand, if you don't get in a revelation of what you're reading, you might as well just read the newspaper. To God be the glory, he wants you to understand what he wrote. That means you got to hear. In order to hear, you got to see. Good Lord. We're going to keep going. Woo! Praise God. Ephesians chapter 10, we're putting on our full armor, y'all. Before we leave out the house, we got to get the helmet on. You know, we in the wintertime, we put on our hat and some gloves, and we put on our coat, which is our breastplate. Those gloves are that shield and that buckler, which is the word of God. We put on our pants, and we put on our shoes, our feet, to lead us, uh, walk, take us to the place that we're supposed to go as we've been led by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says, Urgh! He wants us to put on that full armor of God. If he didn't want us to put it on, God would not have given it to him. He would not have given it to God, to Jesus' disciples to write down. So we put on our armor and it is in the book of Ephesians chapter 10 through seven, uh, chapter 6 verses 10 through 17. Ephesians 6, 10 through 17, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The enemy is always trying to take you back to the place of sin that you should understand, which is why you need on your whole armor of God. You are made righteous and holy and true. And the enemy, in order to tear you down, he got to take you back to where you was in sin with him. But God said, no, for I have overcome the world. Put on your full armor of God. For we wrestle not against the against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The enemy would not have a, not have a place unless you give it to him. So stand strong on the word of God. And don't give him nothing. Verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. 
that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That would be the word. That's Jesus. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked trials and tribulations, Woo! and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You can't do it without salvation and you can't walk out your salvation without the word of God and the Holy Spirit. Good God. Jesus needed Holy Spirit in the wilderness when he was there 40 days and 40 nights battling the devil for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't you know? Here, Ephesians 6, 18 through 19 says, Praying always without prayer and supplication in the spirit, that is tongues, glory to God, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Don't be ashamed to speak in tongues. You ain't trying to get glory for you. You getting the wisdom from God. You talking to your heavenly father. And as you speak and talk to him, he goes ahead and starts taking the picture full of understanding and wisdom and starts pouring it into you. He starts pouring it into you. And as that understanding, as that as the stuff from heaven pours out from his hand and from his picture onto you and it starts dripping on you. It saturates the word on the inside of you and the living water on the inside of you says, Woo! I recognize that anointing. That is the father. I am going to rise up. The whole of fire goes Whoa! It is time to burn the dross. It is time to burn the dross. This person now has the understanding and the wisdom from the Father. Oh my goodness, how good he is. Whoa! Let us ignite together. Glory to God. You wonder why the people in heaven Hallelujah, have this resounding praise for the Lord. Because when, when the goodness of God touches them, they get a new revelation. And they not only have on their full armor of God, but their armor is strengthened every time they get a new revelation for the Lord. Which is why when one says glory to God, the other one says glory to God. And it is a continuous hallelujah praise in heaven. Because each and every one of them has just built upon themselves a new revelation of the understanding of the armor of God of the goodness and the beauty and the joy and the love of God and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of of the gospel. Glory to God. I think God just spoke up in this place. Numbers 6, 24 through 26 says. Glory to God. God just spoke up in this place. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. And be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. And give thee peace. God is always with you. You are breathing his breath. Your body is made up of his word. And it is manifested by his breath. His saturation. Your saliva is his saliva. You ain't here by yourself. You ain't never alone. Because every part of you. Is the Lord Jesus Christ. Every part of you. The snot. The poop. The pee. The ejaculation, the sweat, the tears, the blood, the baby making, the babies, the breast, the hands, the fingers, the toes, the eyes, the nose, 
the ears, the hair, all God. Every little bit. You wonder why he can count every hair on your head? Bam, because it's his. Good Lord. Ooh. He know his word and his word fails not. Glory to God. Trust God and fear not. Revelations 118. We're getting into the message, y'all. Revelations 118 says this. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, that means take a look at y'all. Look at this. Look at that. I am alive forevermore. That's eternally, always. And then it says, amen. That means it's done already. You ain't even got to worry about that. And have the keys of hell and death. That means that the enemy has no right to take your life. He ain't even got the right to plant a seed of doubt, deception, death, destruction, sickness, or disease in your body. He ain't got a right to plant no sickness in your body. He ain't got the right to deform your children in your belly. That belly belongs to the Lord. That child belongs to the Lord. That is the very seed and egg of God. He made that. You and your child belong to the Lord. The enemy ain't got the right to touch you. Stop letting them touch you. Call on God. That's what he there for. He like, I'm your father. Call on me. I'm right here. See, what happens is when you don't know enough, that's when you get captured. And oftentimes we be worried about and thinking about, oh, 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 you mean like being snatched like those movies, those horror movies? That snatching stuff really does happen. And it happens to the unsaved, to those that don't know enough. It happened to me. When you don't know enough. And to know, it means to have an intimacy with God. In order to have an intimacy with God, you know how you make making love with your boo. It gets to the point of the climax and all of a sudden you find him grabbing your hands and holding. Oh. Pulling tight. See, I use sex because y'all get on y'all are like, yeah, I know sex. Yeah, I'm good at sex. Yeah, girl, you want to know? No, I, I don't. I, I don't want to know personally. I got a man. I don't want to know. Mm-mm. Showed up. Glory to God. In Acts chapter nine, verse eleven, it says, "And the Lord God." said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire of the house of Judas. For one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. 9.15 says, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings And the children of Israel. He's a Christian y'all. To bear my name is to bear the anointing. Christ is the anointing of Jesus. What's the anointing of Jesus? The father. Justice. Truth. I read that so you would understand. Who you are. See, horror movies are based on the premise of the victim not knowing the dangers lurking around their space, ahead, behind their bodies. The body represents the soul. You're like, hmm, yep, hold on. See, the body does the physical walking. The head of the soul will lead the choices you make. Like zombies choose to eat human flesh to have a connection with life. You remember when HIV AIDS first came out? 
And people in the 90s, you know how we did. We came up with a cool, uh, 80s and 90s, we came up with a name for everything. <laughs> Just so we can get some understanding, so we could give people a clue what I actually say and what it is. And so we would call them the walking dead. I tried not to say it, but I heard it. I was like, ooh. But that's what it was. And HIV AIDS persons were called this, the walking dead, as in lepers, as in a warning to steer clear of. It was an installation of fear. Meaning, steer clear of them, don't go near them. It meant that they made a wrong choice, they lacked wisdom, and also, again, it was to instill fear. Don't hug them, they are no longer huggable. If you touch them, you'll catch it because it is blood borne, and God forbid you have a cut on you. Don't even let a drop of that enter into a cut. You will become like them. Isn't that how it was for the lepers? They were put away. See, the enemy, he tries desperately to rise your shame to a level that you cannot see above that brick wall. You trying desperately, you, you stretching your neck and you trying to get over this thing and you can't hardly see because now it's beyond your neck. It's like oh, all the way up to your eyes and then it's going like over your eyes and the, it's getting so much higher. It's above your head and it's all shame and sin and things that you have done before. Walking dead. It's meant to invoke shame upon you. And to instill fear upon others and tell them, if you lay with them, that's a, that's a definite sign that that's a lack of wisdom. Look, they had lack of wisdom. I told them not to do it. Now we're going to shame them because we don't want to be around them. You touch them, you're going to die. And they started coming out with videos showing you, you can hug them. But before you couldn't even, you, you don't even know if it's in a saliva. Interesting, coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know if it's in the saliva. So it's it's airborne. It travels in the saliva. Well, most colds and bacteria are in saliva, but coronavirus, spiritual. You're like, Kathy. People have died from coronavirus. What are you talking about? Every sickness in this earth has a spiritual leader. Has a spiritual demonic leader. Don't be afraid of nothing. Trust God. These people that were afflicted with HIV AIDS. They were called the walking dead. They absolutely lack wisdom because some of them were like, well, she don't look like she got AIDS because no scars, no marks. Because that's how people first identified them. The ones with the popcorn scars on their face, the knots on their neck. That was the, the body trying to fight body's defenses, trying to fight against what was going on in the body. Those nodes. Walking dead. They should have. They should have capped the pipe right. They should have plugged that tank. For those that acquired. This cancer. HIV AIDS. By sexual. Free will contact. They were called. They got the name of the walking dead. As another. Shingle of shame. You know our store has their shingle out. This is ABC Communications. Come get your cell phone. I don't know if that's a real store, y'all. I'm just saying. One, two, three, ABC. If that's a real store, my apologies. You know, I'm just trying to give an example. See, your name is your shingle. Your name is your shingle. And it's up to you to protect it. What you gonna do? See, we discovered by reading the word, if we would just abstain 
you have a greater chance of not catching HIV AIDS. And some people caught it through blood transfusions at, at, at the hospitals when they weren't testing the blood. They knew about the bacteria, but they didn't test the blood banks. Because people would give blood in order to get money to go buy drugs. And sometimes they would have sex to get money to buy drugs. And they would give blood. And there you go, that circle effect. And third John 2, it says, Beloved above all things, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. God wants you to prosper. And in prosper and prospering in God, this is what you got to understand. You have a right to life. You have the right to live. You have a right to life. And you have a right to live. You have a right to life. And you have a right to live. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 1 to 3 says, So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun, and behold the tears of such as were oppressed. And they had no comforter on the side of their oppressors. There was power, but they had no comforter. Wherefore, I praise the dead, which are already dead more than the living, which are yet alive. Yet, I mean, yea, better is he than both they that which that have not been who hath seen the evil work that is done under the sun. You know what's an evil work? Having somebody to fear, to be in terror. No matter what it is, you are to fear not. You are to fear not. In horror afflicts, pertinent information is kept back, blocked from the victim's to push the storyline. Pertinent information is kept back. Blocked. From the victims. From the characters in the story. To push the storyline. It builds up. The momentum of terror. In the minds. Hearts. And eventually the mouth. Of the reader. Or the movie goer. Because, you know, sometimes those movies are books that have been made, right? The desired hope is a shriek, a scream, a full-on terror and fear to the point that you push back your understanding and lose direction. You forget the way to go. You forget the way to go. It is not good to forget the way to go. Ephesians chapter 1 and 18 talks about eyes of understanding. It says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What am I saying? I am saying, trust God, fear not. Just like there was a black plague for, our, for the ancestors. There's HIV, AIDS, and coronavirus, and syphilis, and gonorrhea, and syphilis was back in the, what was that, the 20s, 30s, 40s. Abortions. See, when people get raped, and don't go around raping people. I'm not condoning rape. Don't even do that. Rape is not even about sex. It's about power. People go around raping folks because they can't control them. And they have no control over their own life. They have lost their way to go. They think that if they will, some people, and I've seen this and read this and saw this. Some people will rape people that look like someone that oppressed them, that made them sad, that they could not control. So they go and find somebody. They profile somebody that looks like that person. Then they go and assault that person. 
in an attempt to gain control over that person. That is a person of a depraved mind who has turned his back on God. He or she has turned their back on the Lord because they have given in to fear. This is what I'm saying. Don't give in to fear. Y'all heard the story of Tyler Perry and how he would find that he would he he would try and go to a place in his mind when his father would be beating him he would be in the park and he would go to that place until his father stopped beating him he was just trying to get away but when he reached a certain age he could no longer go to that park that little boy the image of that little boy having fun could no longer be his place of refuge. I believe the reason why God did no longer allow that place to be the place of his refuge is because he was becoming a man and a man <clears throat> can no longer run from fear. You got to train a child up in the way to go so that when he is old, he shall not depart from it. God was trying to train him up. God did not approve of what his father was doing. But I believe the fact that he could not run anymore. God was saying, I am going to prosper you. And John 1 17, it says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. God didn't do that thing to him, but he sure enough delivered him from it. If you don't think he wasn't, he wasn't mistreating his mama, anytime a man beats on his child, he sure enough beating on that mama. Because every time you beat her child, you, it's the same as beating her. And I bet she choked her out a couple of times or two. And made sure that she would not get in between his rage and his misunderstanding in his fist. Because that boy looked just like him. And just the same way that Tyler could no longer go to his place of refuge. That man could no longer go to his place of refuge. And so he took it out. On the thing that looked like him. And then his taking out of his vengeance did not save not one soul. But God, when he took out his vengeance on Jesus for our sin, it saved our soul. Because Jesus was of pure blood without sin. He had no fear, no terror in him. Jesus, no matter what he saw in his earth, he refused to give in to fear. When his mother and father came looking for him, they were on a trip and they realized that he was still behind that he was not with them. They thought he was lost, but he wasn't lost. He was in the synagogues talking to the grown men, telling them the truth and the way. Giving them revelation of the scriptures. And they told him, you can't do that. We thought you were lost. And I bet you his response was, no, I came for the lost. He had to continue growing and to minister to the youth. He couldn't just jump the generations and go straight to the adults. He had to minister to the youth. Because how many of y'all know that if he was ministering to the adults in the synagogues, that he was also ministering to the children in his class, the children in his neighborhood, his cousins, the people of his age and those that were under him because Jesus was the firstborn of Mary and Joseph. And he had brothers and sisters, James and Judas. He had family. He was training them up. He was training them up in the way to go. Even though his brothers did not believe, but his mother did. It wasn't until he died and rose again that his brothers believed him. But what about the others? Because even though they didn't believe, they heard every word that he said. 
And every word that he said rang true when they saw him rise again. For man to rebuke terror and fear, you call on the Lord and say, Father, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus, rebuke the devourer for my sake. You're like, well, why do we call on the Father? Because it is a spiritual battle and you being flesh cannot fight a spiritual battle with flesh. You can't hit it. You can't punch it. Some people say, well, it, them spirits punch back. They ain't stronger than Jesus. They can try, but they ain't going to hurt you. You know why? Because Jesus already paid the price for your deliverance from evil, which is why you call on the Father. Deliver me from evil. Deliver me from the devourer, Father God. The devourer is the devil and all his minions who he sends out to wreak havoc in the life of the body of Christ and even those that are not saved. And he terrorizes those that are not saved so you won't get saved. Because he says, if Jesus was real and if he was alive, he would have saved you from this, from this accident. From this sickness, from this disease, from your father that abused you, from your mother that didn't do nothing, from your auntie, your uncles, your brothers, the neighbors, your sisters, your friends, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, everybody, your boss. He would have delivered you if he was real. God says, I am, and I sent you and help her. I am, and I was with you the whole time. I was in your apartment when the enemy came to beat you. I covered you with a shell, and you heard the knocking on the shell, and he was beating you with a sledgehammer. If I was not there, you would have died in your sleep, but I was there. says I will never leave nor forsake you which is why you know he is always with you stay in faith in Jesus you walk forward in victory I'm not saying not to take earthly medicines because I'm not a doctor, so I can't technically tell you that. But Jesus, he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Go to your, pray for yourself, pray for your healing. And then go to the doctor and get a report and get it in writing. Say, can you write that on my chart and give me a copy? A report of your healing, of your being better than you were before. See, when you pray for yourself, you got to believe that you got it. That you received your healing. Because God is in the healing business. It's. When Jesus says that you are healed. From a finger that was cut. And you don't need a bandage anymore. Believe him. You'll be able to see in your own hand. That that cut has been healed. I'm looking at my hand. And I had cut myself. Cutting an onion or something. Or a tomato. I was using a paring knife. And it cut straight down. All three layers. But it's healed now. So do I need to go to the doctor. To prove that my hand is healed. No. I can look and see. That it's healed. can look and see that it's you. For some of us, the, the issues are internal. One lady had kidney problems and she needed a transplant and she could not pee unless it was in a bag. But a man prayed for her and told her, well, I should say she had to, she had to wear a diaper because she couldn't hold her pee. Her muscles wasn't strong and she basically, her kidneys were failing. You see? Urethra no good. Kidneys jack. And she just had problems. But this man prayed for her. And she drank a bunch of water and went to the bathroom and peed with thunder. 
went to the bathroom, did not even pee on herself along the way to the bathroom. From some of you folks with bladder problems, you know, you take a step, it goes, tss, another step, tss, another step. Tss. Don't laugh too hard. It's all out, right? But God. First Peter 2 and 9 says, but well, you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are not to be in terror nor fear. Come to the light of God. I came to the light of God, which is why I am here today. Had I run from God into the darkness, not even seeing the way to go, I would still be in hell. Thank you, Lord, for saving my life. Literally, my soul and my life, actually, I should say. Because when you say literal, it means in reading. The actual, in the form of reading. So we say actually. God saved my life. And I learned, fear not, trust God. Psalms 56, 3 through 5 says, What time am what time I am afraid I will trust in thee? And God, I will praise his word. And God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. The enemy is always against you. But God is always for you and with you. Fear not. Trust God. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to, now is the time. Now is the time to give your heart to God. Know that Jesus Christ is Lord over you. God would have it no other way than for you to be absolutely 100% abundantly saved. You're like, what is abundantly saved? That is making a confession unto the Lord of, for your salvation. And staying with God and not running away. Absolutely abundantly saved is sticking with God and not running away because somebody makes fun of you. Because somebody tells you, oh, but you were just doing this yesterday. You'll be able to tell them today. Today, I have made my confession. I have made my confession and I am saved. Glory to God. Glory to God. I am saved. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says... Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Glory to God. In Romans 8 through 10, it says, So then that they are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man... Have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of is life because of righteousness. You got to confess your faith unto the Lord. You can be dead to be, you can be dead to sins when you are forgiven of all your sins. Jesus paid the price on the cross that he may forgive you, that the father may forgive you of all your sins. So when you make a confession unto the Lord Jesus Christ, what the father now sees is Jesus. What the father now sees is Jesus. Glory to God. What the father now sees is Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to, repeat this prayer after me. Glory to God. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I confess my sins before you this day. I give up my past life with Satan and close every door to all Satan's devices. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me and for bringing me back to where I once was. From this day forward, Lord Jesus, I will be sensitive to how you feel. I won't hurt you. I will obey you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to present me to Jehovah in your name. Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth that you rose from the dead, that I am saved and receive you today wholeheartedly, 100%. Make me a light in a dark place. And from this day forward, I will leave this place and share you with everyone I meet and everyone I know. It's commitment, Jesus. I will get this world for you. I pray this prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus with evidence of speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues for the edifying of the body of Christ Jesus by the will of Jehovah God. Amen, amen, amen. Congratulations. You just got saved, beloved. Glory to God. Jesus loves you 100%. Read your Bible every day, starting off with the book of John, chapter 1. Don't miss. Um, after you finish that, go back and start reading the book of Genesis, two chapters every day, and the book of starting out in the New Testament with the book of Matthew. And read two chapters every day. You can either do that or get yourself a Bible app, which you can find on the resources page of LUTGRadio.com. And uh, get yourself a um, paperback Bible, uh, just in case, you know, internet services grow down. Uh, also, when you get the Bible app, download it to your phone so you're not dependent on internet services. But you will be dependent on that phone being charged. So get yourself a paperback Bible. That way, um, all you got to do is let your thumbs do the turn another page. It's glory to God. <laughs> glory to God and also um, download the app for LUTG Radio TV amen you'll find that on the uh, LUTG Radio page as well you listen to LUTG Radio WKKP digital broadcasting on LUTG Radio.com and so everything I'm telling you is always on the LUTG Radio page download the app uh, and we got a we got a pass up there that's uh, preaching the gospel um, so you can uh, watch it on video glory to God and uh, glory to God, we're working on getting more. I'll become a sponsor of LUTG Radio, amen. That helps us to do more faster, glory to God, and reach more people as well as uh, get more people to assist uh, and to pay the bills here, glory to God. So become a sponsor. As you bless me, God going to bless you because all the good that I do in the name of Jesus is accounted to you when you sow into LUTG Radio. And don't forget to be a tither. Tithe at your local church. Don't give me your tithe that belongs to the Lord. You're supposed to tithe wherever you get your wisdom and your knowledge. Amen. Um, and so uh, get yourself into a Bible-based church. And uh, I am uh, like an adjunct, uh, an assist to the churches, a resource. I'm, I'm not a pastor. I'm a resource. Glory to God. And so... Uh, Give your tithes and your offerings to the church. And so your seed here in LUTG Radio. Amen. Your tithe is 10% of your gross. So if you make a dollar, then your tithe is 10 cents. If you make $100, your tithe is $10. $1,000, your tithe is $100. You get it? All right. Glory to God. God gives you understanding. Don't forget to give God some praise all the day. Speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Any language that you don't understand is a tongue. And you want to... And when you're speaking in tongues, you're never cursing. You're never saying swear words. It's only praise unto the Lord. It is conversation with God. It is sometimes uh, God is revealing things to you um, in your to your spirit. It's, a, it's an utterance uh, from the Holy Spirit unto the Father through you. So the Holy Spirit will use your breath and, and the Lord will use your breath. 
The Holy Spirit will speak in tongues and the Lord will speak in a language that you understand. And so he'll give you understanding, revelation, glory to God. Amen. I never explained it that way before. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. And so become a sponsor of LUTG Radio. Speak in tongues every day, all day. Where you're washing dishes.